Hi Taurus, this is your singles love reading for February 2018, Taurus single sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Personally, I like the moon sign the best. I think that it's going to resonate the best for you. If you don't know your moon sign, there's a little link in the description box below this video, as well as another link to a video that explains why I think that that's going to resonate the best, because I don't want to take up your time right now with that one. We have love to talk about. So let's get started. <music> Okay, Taurus, what is going on with you in the month of February? And they say you might not be talking to new people, um, but mostly because you don't want to have to make decisions about whether you want to go on dates with them, whether they're worth your time, that kind of a thing, out of sight, out of mind. Um, what's working for you as far as your behavioral patterns for better? And then what's not maybe working for you uh, for worse? <laughs> okay, so the good thing is that you're like, you know what? It's cool that things take time. It's cool that things move slow. You are um, very much okay with the fact that a partner will show up in divine timing and that's all right. And if it's slow moving, it's cool because when it shows up, you are ready to give all the love to the right person. Um, and you're really, really honest about knowing who the right person is. Like, you're not going to fuck around and be with somebody who's bad for you. Like, you're only going to show love to people who deserve it, who deserve to be in your sphere. So that's amazing. Because most of us will give love to the wrong people and then beat ourselves up later. And it's a nasty, vicious cycle. But not you this month, Taurus. So, fantastic. Now, the negative side of things. Okay, yeah. So you're doing a really good job, like worrying about self-care, taking care of you, forgiving yourself, all that stuff. Um, but as a result, maybe, just maybe, uh, you're not applying like new practices to your daily life. Like you're more just kind of enjoying things, going with the flow, and some of your responsibilities might be going by the wayside a little bit. Not to like a tragic end, but to the point where if you were to meet someone this month, um, there would be a little bit of bickering and arguing because ultimately you guys want the same things, but then you're putting out a vibe that's not necessarily hypocritical, but it's saying like, hey, I want these things. And they're like, well, then why aren't you working towards those? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I love a clean house. Well, why don't you ever clean your house? <laughs> right? Like that kind of a thing. It's just, it's just kind of silliness. But um, so that would be a, maybe a negative aspect, people that you would meet. And it's like you kind of already are sensing this. You kind of already know it. And that's maybe the reason why you're not up to talking to a lot of people this month. Like you're really focused on you, and that's actually not a bad thing. And as a result of super focusing on yourself, you actually are radiating out this more appealing, more attractive, sexier, more vibrant energy to um, potential suitors and you do appear to have your shit together but you also appear a little bit indecisive like you don't know what you want um, that being said it seems like you do know what you want and you're um, able to wait patiently for it but the vibe that you're putting out is kind of telling others that you don't so that's a little bit confusing for people who could come into your sphere now what is an area of further growth that you have in order to attract love in the month of February? And they're saying not worrying about the details so much. You might want to kind of control things a little bit. <laughs> and they say that if you can really just focus on the things that are going well for you instead of what you're lacking, that would be to your greatest benefit. Um, expressions of gratitude are going to help you so much because um, – yeah, I mean, the, there's that energy of like, mm, I don't want to talk to people if we're not like going to bond, if we're not going to be like a deep attachment, if, you know, I can already tell that this person's not my soulmate. And they're saying that that's good, that, that that's not wrong. But they're also saying um, you might come off a little bit offensive or not offensive, but defensive too. Um, so there are people that you could potentially be communicating with. Well, while they're not necessarily going to be your soulmate or your forever partner, um, they could become a really good resource for you later. Potentially they could introduce you to somebody else or they know somebody um, like in a similar field 
for that you're in and then like could recommend a job to you or something like that. So you're like, try not to be, um, just make sure that you're not coming off brash or abrasive, you know, like you're like, mm, not really into it. Try to do that as sweetly as possible. Still like firm and getting the message across like, hey, not into you that way. Um, but, but more like, but I'm willing to be friends kind of a deal. Okay. Um, what are some areas that you need to change in order to attract love? And they say, well, you know what? We're all constantly evolving and changing. So you're already working on it. <laughs> We've already talked about it, but you do have to feel a little bit more strong in, um, in the way that you communicate with others. You might have a little bit of self-doubt there. You might feel a little shy at times. You might second guess yourself and you really need to feel stronger as to like, what is it that's important to me? What is it that I'm not going to um, budge on? Okay, because sometimes we meet people and like they're eight out of 10 things on our checklist of must haves, right? And so then we convince ourselves like, oh, you know what, I'll just give it a try. Like maybe those two things won't bother me so much later or maybe they'll change because they'll know what's important to me. And they're like, no, 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 figure it out. What is the most important thing that you want so we can draw that in? Now, what are some things? Whoa. I guess they have a lot to say on this specific topic. <laughs> what are some things that maybe you need to let go of in order to attract love in February of 2018? I think I said 17 before. Oh, my goodness. Um, so they're like, let go of the need to sort of control things, okay? Um, because, like, mentally – you want to control things, and, and that's usually a good thing when it comes to the law of attraction, right? But if you're not able to express your expectation and you're just going to, like, mentally hold this expectation, how the hell is anybody supposed to meet that, right? So they're like, you know, you're just working on you, and that's really great, but um, ultimately, you have some habits on, like, the on the mental front that you haven't yet changed, and it's more about, like... For example, if I'm going to feel disappointed because somebody doesn't show me the love, um, doesn't show me love in the way that I like to receive it, okay? I don't know if you've heard of the five love languages, but, you know, there's five different ones. There's, like, words of affirmation, physical touch, gift giving, acts of service, something else. Uh, okay, so point is, let's say that I understand love by gift giving, okay? And here comes Valentine's Day. I'm talking to somebody. We plan a romantic date, and they don't bring me a gift. And I'm like, are you even into me? But instead of me saying that to them, I just start to grow resentful of them, and I start to feel disappointed. And then I beat myself up because I'm like, why am I dealing with this person if they're not if they're obviously not into me or you're like, why am I waiting around for them to change? Blah, blah, blah. Where like the simple thing is like, Hey, like this is <laughs> just communication. Okay. And so, um, but that whole nasty resentful downward spiral is something that you can control. It's hard to do. It's easy conceptually to understand, but it's hard to apply into real life, but you can do it. And that's what they need you to let go of is um, if something's bothering you, you do have to bring it up. So that you can release it. Or at least you need to bring it up to yourself and ask yourself, why am I so pissed off? Like, is this actually their problem or is this my problem? Am I just, like, taking this the wrong way? You have to identify those things. So what it's saying is, yeah, it's a challenge. But until I can get past that, until that cycle, because they're like, you know, things are constantly growing, changing, evolving. But until that cycle comes to an end with the world in reverse, then it's going to be difficult for you to draw in the right person. Okay? So that's one barrier that you have here in order to drawing the right person in. Now, I did this for Libra as well, and I want to just give you like an area um, – to focus on, maybe like a chakra to work on in order to sort of release this blockage if possible. Um, so it'll come with like a positive affirmation and stuff. And so you're getting peach. This is related to the sacral chakra and this is directly related to your fears then too, right? So this is about releasing your fears. It's saying inhale a breath of life. So how are we going to release our fears? By living in the present moment, by being mindful now, 
okay? Because if you're thinking about the future, you're going to get anxious. And then you're going to start to, like, create expectations, and maybe they're met, maybe they're not. And, like, if the other person doesn't even know those, how could they possibly meet them, you know? So, um, and if you're living in the past, or it's where depression comes from. So we're going to want to release all this energy. So you think about your sacral chakra, which is, like, a couple fingers, maybe, like, three fingers below your belly button. So you're going to want to inhale this peach color, like kind of directly into your belly there. Um, and then like exhale it back out, in and out and in and out and in and out until you can feel better. And you want to try really hard in the month of February if you want to release this blockage to be very mindful of the moment, okay? So like each day, um, I'm thinking about now. <clears throat> Am I happy now? Because I'm not going to be happy, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. I'm not going to be happy living with the anxiety <coughs> of the unknown that's um, in the future, right? Because I don't know which way that's going to go. I can have hopes, but if I hope for things to go exactly one way and I end up not being able to control that, that's going to disappoint me. So that's a fucked up way to see things in February. It's not to say that you shouldn't think about the things that you want, right? Because that's different. But you need to kind of relinquish that control and just live in the present moment now and be happy now. Because if you're being happy now, you're vibrating at a higher level. Your heart chakra is opening. You're pushing love out into the universe. And as a result, love comes back to you. Okay? So that's how you're going to clear the blockage in February in order to receive love. Because you're not, you're definitely smart. Okay? You're much smarter than the other signs. Let's be real here about um, the kind of love that you want to bring in and you're discerning and you're like, I'm not putting up with bullshit. So that's amazing. That's awesome. That's like, you know, a solid 80% of the battle. But the other 20% is going to be opening yourself up to um, living in the present moment and then radiating that love out of your heart chakra so that it can come back in. And that's going to start with the sacral chakra below there. We have to, it's like a Maslow's pyramid. You have to meet the bottom levels of your chakras in order to kind of get up to the top where things are amazing, where your crown chakra is all lit. So you have to have your basic needs. And then um, after that, the sacral chakra, like replace it, like dispelling your fears and being open to new things and exciting opportunities and all of that. And then, you know, like your self-esteem comes after and then you're ready for love. So that's the biggest building block that's fucked up right now. Um, before you can get to this love energy and like let it flow in. So that's your reading for single Tauruses in the month of February and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching my video. Check out terriblyaccurate.com for a personal reading. Follow on Snapchat, like on Facebook.